And I will move to my last topic of tonight before we turn it on to a Dr. Mark Cohen. This is a question to initiate the topic of olecranon fractures. 35-year-old patient that uh, sustains an upper extremity injury after a vehicle collision. We're going to look at the x-rays and then think about what is the best option to provide the stability to this injury. So here you can see the x-ray. And as you can see, is a fracture where the distal humerus has basically been driven through the ulna, creating a complex comminuted fracture dislocation. So of the different options that are presented, no question this patient needs a plate. And the reason is that with tension band wiring, A, the joint will be unstable, and B, the fracture will be unstable as well. So legendron fractures are actually pretty common, and they can result from either a direct blow, which typically results in comminution, or an indirect blow, which typically results more in a single line transverse or oblique fracture. Remember the basic anatomy of the uh, greater sigmoid notch and how the triceps will insert into the posterior aspect of the ulna, whereas the anconeus is on the lateral aspect. They both belong to the root C7. Of course, I am biased, but I do believe that the Mayo classification is best for treatment. And it's actually very simple to memorize. If you look at the illustration on your right and think only about the column on your left, type 1 is not displaced, type 2 is displaced, but there wasn't a dislocation, and type 3 is displaced and there was a dislocation. And then you basically add A or B for comminution or non-comminution. So if you have a type 2B, that means that the fracture is displaced, the elbow never dislocated, and the fracture is comminuted. There is other classifications. Dr. Colton proposed this classification that uh, classifies fractures in non-displaced, a uh, small avulsion like you see in a triceps injury, an oblique and transverse displaced, the one with comminution, which would be any of the B category of the mirror classification, and then the type 3 of Mayo, which is the fracture dislocation. And then Dr. Schatzker from Canada classified fractures into a simple transverse, transverse with impaction, oblique one, comminuted, which is all the B category of the mirror classification. The ones that are actually more like a Montilla fracture dislocation, so distal to the uh, greater sigmoid notch, and then the classic transolecanon fracture dislocation. And then the AO classification with the basic categories of A, extraticular, B, intraticular, and then C, intraticular, where there is a fracture of the olecanon and also of the radius. The key for this fracture is to understand if strength in extension is compromised, because if the patient is unable to extend the elbow against gravity or the examiner, that will indicate that the fracture has compromised clearly the function of the olecanon. X-rays are very useful and typically all you need for the more simple fractures. Remember that it may be necessary to obtain extra views for other injuries. It may be difficult to see an associated fracture of the real head or the capitellum. CT is very useful for the most complex fractures. So if there is comminution or especially if there is sensation into the coronoid, a CT scan can be extremely useful to plan the surgery. So now we'll move into another question. This is an 82-year-old nursing home resident and fell onto his elbow, presents with pain and swelling, no instability, and there is a fracture of the olecanon that affects 25% of the articular surface. And the patient has a fragment of osteopenia. So here in the question, what they're looking is for the fact that the elderly Rodman patient with a small olecanon fracture can be treated without surgery. So if you mobilize these patients in some extension, I would probably not opt for 90. I would go for maybe a little bit uh, more extension, but never more than 40. The patient will do well. And this has been shown very eloquently in a study by doctors Kurt Brown and uh, Margaret McQueen uh, from Edinburgh that showed that in the low demand elderly individual, a displaced fracture can be treated non-operatively and motion can begin, begin pretty early. For patients that require surgery, there is basically three options. You can use a classic tension band as uh, shown in the illustration on your right that is obtained from the uh, AO manual. You can use IM fixation with a screw with or without tension binding, or you can use a plate. And plates have become more and more common. And as you can see, this is uh, queried in the OITE and the board all the time. Plates are very important when there is comminution or instability, so fracture dislocation and comminution. Thirdly, if the fracture goes into the coronoid, and fourth, in Montilla fracture. So these are the classic indications where tension bandwagon would not be enough. 
because the other boy is either too unstable or the fracture has too much comminution or the fracture extends into the coronoid. Very important to remember. And then finally, an option that I have used occasionally is that in the patient that is elderly and has a small fracture but has a fair amount of weakness in extension where you don't want to treat him non-operatively, you can consider resecting the fragment and then repairing the triceps to the fracture bed. And that has been reported to have reasonable outcomes. Now, when we work on tension band wiring, um, my preference is to place the wires through the anterior cortex, but you have to be careful because if the wires are directed towards the radius and they perforate that cortex of the ulna, they can actually interfere with front rotation. If you think about it, as you place the wires, if the tip exits the cortex on the radial side of the ulna, it can actually rub with the distal bicep tendon and with the radius. Secondly, if you place them too deep anteriorly, you can potentially injure the anterior interosseous nerves. So I think it's important to remember that if the wires are directed intraosseously, they have to be short and they have to be aimed, if anything, medially as opposed to laterally. We know that uh, tension band wiring has a pretty high rate of secondary surgery. And remember that it doesn't provide major axial stability in the presence of comminution. That's why questions about using plate fixation for the most complex fractures come up all the time. This is an example of uh, using a screw. And here the issue is that because the screw is straight and the ulna is bent, not uncommonly use of a screw will potentially displace your fracture either medially or laterally depending on your entry point. Secondly, you have to use a thick enough and long enough screw so that the threads of the screw will actually engage in the cortex of the endostial aspect of the ulna. Let's move to another question. This is a 56-year-old right hand dominant attorney that falls from a standing height and has a closed uh, injury that we will see in figure one. And the surgeon uh, used a plate and a screw construct. So here you can see the fracture. And if we go back to the questions, you can see that uh, they're asking you why did the surgeon chose a plate? And of the different options, uh, I think the best option would be option number five, fracture comminution because the fracture extends distal to the coronoid, so not into the coronoid, and fracture comminution cannot be handled properly with tension band wiring. So in this situation, comminution would be an indication for plate fixation. And um, when using plates for olecanon, I think now it's very common to use pre-contoured, periarticular, posterior plates. And uh, using oblique screws will give you more stability and uh, will allow also addressing any associated uh, coronary structures. Remember that these plates can be bothersome. So even though they don't migrate as the wires, they still have a somewhat high rate of removal. Uh, we are quoting here a 20% rate of removal of uh, the uh, plate. And then this is the technique we talked about before for the very elderly patient with a uh, fracture that uh, can be addressed by resecting the fracture fragment and then reattach the triceps to the fracture bed to provide adequate uh, stability. So one more question that talks about uh, bridge plating in Lecanon, which is most appropriate in one of the following X scenarios. And here again, they are emphasizing the basis of using plates in comminuted fractures, as you can see here. And then complications, the most common is the hardware being prominent, more with wires, less with plates. The stiffness can happen as well. And the non-union is rare, but when it happens, as you can see on the edge on your right, it can be a major problem. If you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like. We'd love to hear your thoughts and what you'd like to see next in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and follow us on social media.